That is why it is one of the most coveted nights out of the five nights. And we are coming to the end of the recitation of the Quran. We thank Allah for bringing us this far and we ask Allah that whatever is remaining, we get the best of Ramadan, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, all our families, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, bless us with His mercy and blessings and forgive us on this auspicious night. Amen. So we started with Surat Al Mulk, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with a statement Tabarak al the one in he whose hand is the heavens and the earth, in his hand is the entire universe, he is full of baraka. So Allah says, the one who, to whom this whole universe this belongs is full of baraka. Just mentioning his name is baraka. And no matter who we are, at some point in time, there will be some questions that will vex our mind. Everybody will ask this question to himself. Who am I? Why was I created? Is there really something called Allah? And if there is, why doesn't he introduce himself? And if there is such a thing, and if I was indeed created, how do I connect myself to this great being? What is the means? Allah answers the question, why was I created? This is the only place where you'll get these answers, my dear brothers. Science and math, they'll teach you numbers. Physics will tell you cause and effect. It will discuss laws. It will never answer these questions. In the Darwin's world, we are just a mass of molecules which have come together. At best, we are a glorified monkey. And like animals, we're going to eat, procreate, and die. That is the extent. This is the level of their knowledge. As Allah says in the Quran, that is all that they can answer. The Quran answers, gives you convincing answers to these questions. And Allah says, Because these are questions. What does death mean? Why did Allah create death? Why did Allah create me? Allah says, We created death and life. So that I want to see each one of you how best you can of actions you can do so that you can be rewarded look at the positive connotation to it allah wants to reward you allah wants to give you a lot and says come let's see how much you can do you got some time you got five years you got 10 years you got 30 years you don't know how long how long we have but you got some time you know you don't have a hundred years from now a hundred years from now for practical purposes we are all take it for granted we'll be dead We'll be down in this ground. We won't be alive a hundred years from now. A hundred years before, we were not alive on this earth. This is a given. And Allah wants to see each one of us what we can do with the resources we have. Allah says in a different place, Infiru khifafan wa Leave. Whether you are loaded or you are poor and you have nothing. That's not an excuse. I don't have money, you know, when I um, make a million dollars, then I'm, I'm going to donate to the masjid. That's not the, uh, the, the, the question. If you want to donate, a cent is enough because it's the niyyah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is counting. You want to do something, you will get up and come. You want to come for fajr, you will get up and come. Yes, you got to go to work. We all have to go to work. But if you, the knee intention and... How much you can do with what you have is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at. Allah created the hellfire. Allah says, Takadu tamayyazu min al The fire is burning with such zest. Kullama ulqiya fiha fawjun sa'alhum khazanatuha. 
and droves after droves of people will be thrown into that fire. And the keepers of the fire will ask the, the people who are getting in, nobody told you anything? Why? What happened to you? Why did you end up here? And they will say, yes, there was a warner, we got, people used to tell me, we didn't care. We said, hey, this is life, this is all we are going to live. There is nothing called Allah, He didn't send anything, there is no really anything that we need to be concerned about. You are in a great loss. And they will say, وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَاقِلُ Had we listened, why did we not listen? Why didn't we use our minds? Everything was obvious. Just looking around, you could tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation scream and tell you who the creator is. We wish we had used our minds. We wish we had listened to the, the, the people who were telling us all this. And we would not have been in the fire of hell. And Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ The one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unseen. لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ For them there is forgiveness and a huge reward is waiting for them. Again, focus on that word. يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ Unseen. This whole Ramadan is about that. That you're fasting unseen. Somebody is watching you. And it is Allah. No human being can be watchful on you. You could have, you could just hide and drink some water or do something. Allah is watching. And this is what Allah wants to see. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we develop that self-consciousness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us all the time. Allah asks a question. Amman yarzukukum in Who can give you risk if Allah holds it? Is there someone who can give it to you? You are arrogant. You don't think. All Allah has to do is stop that water from coming down. Everything will go up and down. All Allah has to do is shake the earth a little bit and just one tremor and there was panic today because of that earthquake. Just a tremor. Allah has power over everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qalam, Noon wal qalami wa ma yasturoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by the pen. Ma anta bi ni'mati bi rabbika bi majnoon. Addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he is sane because people started to ridicule our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah says, swearing, wa inna ka la'ala khuluqin azim. Allah created our Prophet. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the best of ways. Indeed, his character was impeccable. We have told, I mean, we have listened to stories. No need to repeat again and again. And the story in Makkah, when he made a promise to someone that I'm going to stay here, they were walking in the market and the man, his companion, forgets something. He says, why don't you stay here? Uh, can you be here until I come back? He says, yes, our Prophet Sallallahu This is the time of Jahiliyyah. He says, I will wait for you until you come back. The man goes home, he forgot everything. One day passes, two day pass, three day pass. And then he accidentally is walking through the market and he finds our Prophet Sallallahu still <coughs> waiting for him there. And he says, what, 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 what is this? I didn't, uh, you know, I just made a statement. But he said, I gave you my word that I'm going to wait for you here until you come back. That was the character of a Prophet ﷺ. Once, Hadrat Aisha anha, is with our Prophet ﷺ, and a man knocks on the door. And our Prophet knew who he was, and he tells Hadrat Aisha, anha, this man is a very bad character. And after making that comment, he goes, it opens the door, he speaks to him in the best of kindness. And when he leaves, Hadrat Aisha asks, 
Why did you talk? Why were you so nice to that guy? You told him he's such a bad person. And he replies, he is a bad person. But my character is something different. I'm not going to bring my character down low to his level. That was our prophet. Abdullah bin Ubay, Raisul Munafiqeen, the leader of the Munafiqeen, who constantly gave trouble to our Prophet وسلم, constantly. And yet our Prophet وسلم's character was impeccable to the point that this man passes away and his son, who was a Muslim, he comes and requests the Prophet وسلم, for his shroud and he gives it. Hadra Umar tries to stop him. He says, look, the character of that man was bad, but a Muslim brother is making a request. I made it. I gave it to him. He is asked to lead the prayer. This is the greatest of enemies of the Prophet ﷺ, but he does not say no until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran stops him from doing that in the future for any munafiqeen to lead the prayer of Janazah. When Abdullah bin Ubay is being lowered in the grave, he says, wait. And he takes his saliva and says, put, him, put it on his um, mouth so that at least that will give him some coolness. This was the character of our Prophet ﷺ. And indeed, he said, I came to perfect character. He is an example for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us follow and keep him as our example. In this chapter, the story of the garden, which many of you might have read, where a group of people, I'll be very brief because most of you know the story, a group of people have invested, they were group investors, and they had invested on a piece of land because soon there will be a harvest and then we can reap the benefits. And soon the time came. The whole garden was full of fruits, ready to be picked, ripe. I'm not sure how many of you have been to farms, but when you go, there will be others waiting, the beggars, so that they can get something. So they spoke to among themselves and said, you know what? Let's go real early. Before the sun rises, let's be there. Because afterwards, all these beggars will come and then it kind of becomes embarrassing to keep it in our pockets, to give them some change. Let's go early, take everything and leave. So they plan and Allah plans and Allah says, Wala yastathnoon. They did not have the courtesy, number one, to invoke the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to seek the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to say bismillah, to acknowledge that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given them that benefit. And that no matter what, when we are making that money, remember, there is a portion to be given to the poor. When we make money, use it, but a portion must be dedicated that will clean your mal. it will make your earnings clean so they decided but by the time they reached in the early morning Allah sent a wind and the entire crop was destroyed that is a parable for us my dear brothers today the world has become extremely selfish the rise of multinational companies where it's like the way I imagine these multinational companies are putting a straw into individual communities and unknown to us, the profits are being sucked out. This is beyond today's discussion, but we have reached where a handful of people are enjoying the spoils of the earth. A handful of people. And this will coalesce further down until the Dajjal will emerge and he will become the de facto owner of all this. Allah knows best. Surah Al-Haqqa will finish with this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a picture of the day of judgment. Allah will come and judge between people. Obviously, we'll be in two groups. One group will receive their book in their right hand. Another will receive in the left. 
The one who is given in the right, he will be smiling. He will be gleaming. And he has done his work. He has done his homework in this dunya. And he has prepared for his retirement after death. Kulu washrabu hani'an bima aslaftum fil ayyam al Eat and drink and he'll be happy. The one who is unprepared, who receives his book in his left hand, he's not prepared. He, he continued in this world as if he's going to live in this dunya forever. He'll be a great loser. Allah gives one glimpse. Just the chains that will be wrapped around him will be 70 meters in length. The food that we will eat is basically pus. The fruit that he will be given is the fruit of zakum, a fruit that Allah describes. It looks like the head of shaitan. I don't know how the head of shaitan looks, but obviously it tells you that one, the shaitan's head is very ugly, and the fruit itself is extremely ugly. And when they eat it, it'll be stuck in their stomach because it'll be full of thorns and it'll start boiling in their stomach. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he protect us from this calamity. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guide us to the straight path. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make us among the musalleen, among those who protect our salah, among those who give in charity, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the dwellers of Jannah, Jannah al Firdaus, inshallah. So before I conclude, I know we spoke about 29th for a fundraiser. Man, tonight is 27th. And Allah says, if this is the night, whatever you do will be multiplied 1,000 times or more. It's like 83 years of what you do in one night. I said, this is the opportunity to give in the path of Allah. I'm sorry, this is not a fundraiser, but I know all of us can afford something. Let us do it. I'm going to raise my hand and say, inshallah, I'll donate a thousand dollars. How many can come with me and raise their hand? You don't have to have a check. Just raise your hand and say, oh Allah, this is like a lifetime opportunity, like you're giving a hundred thousand dollars, mashallah, one, two, three, four. Raise your hand, just say, just raise your hand and say, inshallah, I'll do it. Five, six, seven, eight, mashallah, nine, ten, Allahu Akbar, eleven, subhanallah, twelve, mashallah, mashallah, any more hands, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, mashallah, 18, 19, Allahu Akbar, 20, 21, any more, 22, mashallah, mashallah, any more, all right, and the sisters, I'm sorry, I can't see, but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy and blessings, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect your families, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the best in this dunya and the best in the akhirah, inshallah. Those who can make a thousand, whatever you can, today, even if it's a dollar, do it. Make a niya. You can bring it on the 29th. Shaitan makes you hold it. Tonight, it's a multiplication of a thousand, inshallah, at least. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan is very, very merciful. He automatically says Ramadan is super special. Laylatul Qadr is like 80 years. It's like a lifetime, like a hundred years. So do it, inshallah. Um, Shaykh is reminding us with this ayah, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ نَمْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَادِلَ فِي كُلِّ سُنْبَلَةٍ مِئَةُ حَبَّةٍ وَاللَّهُ يُضَعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ وَعَسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ The example is like one dollar that you put, like one grain. Allah multiplies it 70 times and even more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. I, th I thank you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us together as a community. I pray that as we grow, we continue to grow. And Shaykh, bismillah.
which means what you have is very limited but what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has is limitless and will remain forever so whatever you have made the intention that has been stored forever once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I'm so sorry <laughs> you know stories come to my mind once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam slaughtered and sacrificed a lamb and then he instructed his family to give it away in charity when he returns home he asks Hadrat Aisha anha, is anything left and she says except for this piece one piece of meat she gave away everything nothing nothing's left this is all that is left and he says no except for that piece everything else is saved because that what you hold we'll eat and it's gone finished but that which you gave that's there permanently for us forever may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep this as an idea for us and maybe continue to give in charity may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you and your families may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us on this blessed night allahumma inna ka'foon tahibbul afwa faafwa na ya kareem اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم رساله اجمعين